All right, all right. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. All right, all right. Now, for those that don't know what Shabbat shalom means, Shabbat shalom just means happy Sabbath. All right? Happy Sabbath. So that's how we greet one another when we come in. We want everyone to have a happy Sabbath. It's good to see all your beautiful, wonderful faces. Um, today, we are going to be dealing with the covenants. All right? Last week, we dealt with the basics. Right? We laid the foundation. Mm -hmm. Right? We laid it down. Anytime you lay a foundation down, you always got to build on. Right? It's important to build on your foundation. It's not good just to have a foundation. You got to make sure you build upon the foundation. Right? If I'm building a house with my wife and all I got is a foundation and she's been waiting for me to build this house, mm -hmm. every day I'm taking her out, I'm going to show her Foundation, look, babe, look what I've got. So she's not gonna be happy after a while. Cause she's gonna ask, where is what's being built on top of it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right, so it's important. We laid the foundation last week. Last week, we dealt with the Bible as a whole, right? Anybody can recap on what we dealt with last week? Anybody remember? Of course, we dealt, we dealt with the, uh, how the Bible was laid out chronologically. Mm -hmm. We uh, dealt with the foundation of uh, parts of the Torah. Right, right. And the acronym. Right, which is called, the Old Testament is called the what? <coughs> Tanakh, Tanakh, right? T-A-N-A-K-H, right? Wow. And that's broken up. Now, the, the you know, we, we use the terms Old Testament and New Testament, but biblically those are not the correct testament. Anytime you use something old and new, it always means that that old is done away. If I tell everybody in here I have a new house, mm -hmm. and that over there is my old house, automatically assume you don't live there anymore. Mm -hmm. right. You have something new. That's right. why the term new and old are incorrect terms when it comes to the world. Because right. you're saying one part is done away, but the other part is good. Shabbat shalom. How's everything? Shalom. Shalom, brother. How you doing? So, today, as I said, last week we laid the foundation. We went over to Tanakh. Went over to Bore Hadashah, which is the New Testament, right? Which means renewed covenant instead of new, which is something we're going to deal with today. Um, and we laid it out. We show how Christ is tied into the quote unquote Old Testament. Christ does not do away with it, it basically preaches on, it speaks on the coming Christ, right? The Old Testament does not do away with the New Testament. It adds to what it is. The New Testament is called testimonies, gospels, and epistles, or letters, right? The Old Testament, anytime you see, anytime you see Peter, James, John, Paul, whenever they're talking about scripture, they always are referring to the quote-unquote Old Testament. Why? Because that is the only form of scripture they had when they were walking the earth. They couldn't go reference Matthew, because there was no Matthew. Mm. They couldn't go reference John, because there was no John. Right? The first book written was what? We talked about last week. Galatians. Galatians. 25 years after Christ died. Mm -hmm. So when Paul was writing Galatians, he didn't have no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No revelation. He didn't have that. So whenever they say scripture, he was always referring to the Tanakh, or what we call the Old Testament. Right? And then pulling from that, he give you his synopsis on what he read, right? Because Paul was a scholar. He he studied under uh, Gamaliel, I think his name was. I forgot. It's funny it was. Give, I gotta look. It's in. Uh, who was it? What's his name? Start with a G. I'll be. Give Yes. Yeah. yeah he was a top scholar. I forgot. I know it started with a G. I forgot his name. But he was a top scholar. So every, Paul had to know the Torah by heart. That's right. So when Paul is writing Romans and all that, he's pulling from there and he's giving you his synopsis on it. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, it's not to downplay the New Testament on the Bereal Shah, but the New Testament is a book report of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. It is to prove what is come. The testimony, right? The epistles, the letters. When Paul was writing these letters to the Galatians, he didn't know this was going to go in the book. We don't even have the letters that the Galatians wrote to Paul. That's why it's dangerous to build 
a belief just off of Paul's letter. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have the response, you don't have the first letter that was sent to Paul for him to even respond to. That's right. All right? All right. So now, like I said, last week we laid the foundation. Now we're going to build, not only do we lay a foundation, but a solid foundation. Hallelujah. Yes. Solid foundation. Remember, Christ gave a parable. It was two men. One was a wise man, one was a, one was a foolish man. Right? Mm -hmm. The wise man built his house upon a rock. Right? And when the storm came and the water beat up against the house, Christ said the house stood. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it was founded upon a rock. Solid foundation. But then he said it was a foolish man. Right? This man built his house upon the sands. And when the water came and the rain beat up against the house, the house fell. Mm -hmm. Then it said, and great was his fall. Mm -hmm. Why? Because a lot of people expected that house to stay, mm -hmm. not knowing that it was built on shaky foundation. That's why it's very important to build, whenever you build it, you have a solid foundation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So today we're going to deal with the covenants. Covenants are very important, right? We start from the basis. The reason why covenants are important, because you have to know we serve a God of covenant, an Elohim of covenant. Right? He is big on agreements. He's big on making covenant with this people. All right? So let's lay that foundation. Go ahead, man. So, we need to hit the lights. Everybody can see it over there? Yeah. All right, Psalms, chapter 89. Verses 28 and 37. It says, My mercy will I keep from them forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with them. His seed also will I make to endure forever. Now, I want you to notice as we read these scriptures, notice terms like perpetual, mm -hmm. forever, right? Everlasting, right? Those are key words. Mm -hmm. Forever mean what? Forever. 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 Right? It don't mean it's going to come to it. Forever mean forever. Right? So, verse 29, his seed also will I make to endure forever and as strong as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity, iniquity with stripes. And if you look up that word iniquity, it means lawlessness. Right? It means without law. Nevertheless, my love and kindness will I not utterly take from them, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter, nor alter the thing that is going out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, that will I not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and is thrown as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness mm -hmm. in the heaven. See, this is the foundation we're going to build on. So, we're dealing with covenant, right? So, first question, what is a covenant? And as I you know, I'm trying to, now, I'm going to email this slide to everyone. Make sure I can read your hand right, because I know I emailed something and said, man, I didn't get it, but some of y'all was writing like doctors, so I couldn't, you know, <laughs> understand your, your hand right. So, what is a covenant? It means to cut, class, a bond or treaty, a formal agree agreement between two parties. Say two parties. Two, two parties. parties. To enact an official or formal relationship by contract or legalized instrument or symbolism. The Hebrew word. Go ahead to the next one, baby. Means brick. And that is defined by the scripts as a cutting agreement. Mm -hmm. Say cutting agreement. Cutting, cutting agreement. agreement. Now you're going to notice in every single covenant, there's going to be some form of cutting involved. There's going to be some type of cutting involved. All right? God always cuts. Elohim or God always cuts something to make a covenant with us. Right. Always. There's going to be always some form of covenant, cutting involved. Almost all the covenants were made with blood or some form of covenant, cutting. Now, understanding the covenant and when it comes to Elohim, all right? 
understanding it. One, there's a sign and a symbol for each cover. All right, which we're gonna go over. There is a sign and a symbol for each cover. All right, they can both be conditional and unconditional, right? Mm -hmm. Conditional means there's something you gotta do to activate, right? right? right. Like the renewal covenant, you don't just jump in there, right? Then we have the Noah covenant, which there's nothing you have to do. This is the covenant the Most High said, I'm gonna put a bow in the sky and I'm never gonna flood. That's something we're gonna go over. But you gotta understand the difference between conditional and unconditional covenant, all right? The God creating the covenant <coughs> It's the strength of the covenant. Living God makes living covenants. My fault is a little tight here. Living Elohim makes living covenants. We must understand when dealing with covenants and know the two parties involved. That's very important. Whenever you're dealing with covenants, it's always two parties involved and you must and have to know who those two parties are. Shabbat Shalom, how you doing? The parties or people that want to be part of the covenant must decide if they're willing to accept all terms. That's key. They must decide if they're willing to accept all terms that has everything to do with the covenant. You're just not going to take on this covenant and think you're going to do whatever you want to do. You're not just going to make this agreement. See, we have a westernized thinking of when it comes to agreements, right? Because over here in the U.S., you can sign a paper and then break it and nothing happens, right? All right, you can just sign for a card and then next week not pay for four weeks, even though you agreed on paper that you're willing to pay for four weeks. I haven't seen King. That you're willing to pay for, four, for you know, the next four years. But we just break it over here. Why? Because that's how this whole nation was started. It was started with breaking of covenants. Mm -hmm. When they came over with the Indians, they told them and promised them things. They came over with guns right. and they changed their whole mindset. Right. That's why the Indians looked at them crazy because covenant was big when it came to the Native Americans. Yep. All right? Go ahead, babe. Another important fact, the duration of the covenant. You have to know the duration of the covenant. How long does it last, right? Is it everlasting? Is it an end? Is it only for a certain time period? Does it come to an end? If something happens, you must know the duration of every covenant. Now let's talk about covenant theology. We paint the picture here. Mm -hmm. Covenant theology is a very dangerous theology, right? It is a theology that a lot of Christians stand on and believe in, all right? It is an argument put forth by Christians when it comes to the law. It's based off covenant theology. So anytime, I'm not saying all, but most Christians that you deal with, they'll have this covenant theology. They say the New Testament, or is the, or you know, they call it the law of Christ, right? As replaced the Old Testament, which is the law of Moses. Now what that makes it sound like is that Christ came with a different agenda that the most high had. Right. When he clearly made a statement and said, I've not come to do my will, right. but the will of the Father that's sitting. That's right. He made that clear. I didn't come to do my will. I didn't come to do my own thing. I came to do what the Most High sent me to do. Right. There's two types according to the covenant of theology. There's the covenant of works and the covenant of grace. Mm -hmm. right? right? They teach us two sides. There's a covenant of works, then there's a covenant of grace. Right? Now, the Old Testament, as we quote unquote call it, the Tanakh, equals the works, right? Shabbat Shalom, my guy. Good, good. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. The Old Testament equals the works, right? So they believe that that's done away with. That stuff is over, right? What you talked about last week, and we showed how it's not over. It can't be done away with, right? And we'll go more in depth than that. The New Testament equals grace. Which they mean that that's eternal. That's going to last forever. That's never going to end. So they believe that the quote unquote Old Testament or works are done away, but the New Testament of grace is eternal. Covenant theology. Mm -hmm. 
the Old Testament and New Testament pages. I wanted to put this in here. Now, when you open your Bible, right, the Bible that we have today, you open it and you read it, you read from Genesis all the way to Malachi, right? You can read from Genesis all the way to Malachi. Then when you leave Malachi, you come across a page that says the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Now the million dollar question is, who wrote that page? Okay. Right. Who came up with that page? Who came up with that divider? It doesn't say by Paul, it doesn't say by, by Matthew, it doesn't say by Luke, it doesn't say John wrote it, James wrote it. We just have a page that separates the quote unquote Old Testament from the New Testament and that page just introduced the New Testament with a page called the New Testament. That page is not written by a scholar. Right. That page is written and introduced by the church fathers, right? To fit their theology of what? Covenant theology. Mm -hmm. Because they had to separate the quote unquote two testaments in order to come up with that whole mindset. Right. Mm -hmm. This teaching is not found nowhere in the scripture. Covenant theology. It does not teach that the Old Testament stuff is done away and now we have this thing of grace and that old stuff, man, that's that's whack and we have something new and better. No, because Christ didn't come preaching it. He said, don't think. Don't think. Why did he say that? Because he knew folks was going to be thinking that years from now. Don't think that I've come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. Right. I came to walk in it. I came to do it. Now follow me. Paul said, follow me even as I follow Christ. Follow me even as I do what Christ did. Right? So that's covenant theology. We're going to get to it. we just building up to it. The Most High's covenants. All right? You ready? Mm -hmm. There are seven covenants that the Most High made throughout the Tanakh or the Old Testament and the Bread Hottest around the New Testament. There's seven covenants made throughout those. First one we have is the Adam covenant, which we're going to go over in, in depth. We're going to go over in depth with each covenant. The second one we have is what's called the Noah covenant. Third one we have is what's called the Abraham covenant. Fourth one is the Moses covenant. Fifth one is the regathering of the land covenant. Sixth one is the David covenant. And the seventh one we have is what's called the new or what we know as the renewed covenant. It's very important, go back with me, baby, for one second. It's very important to understand these seven covenants. Okay? Very important to understand. All right? Because that's the next layer of our foundation. You must understand these covenants. Now, with the Most High's covenants, you have to know who apply, what covenants apply to who. That's very important. Okay? Adam and Noah covenant applies to all mankind, mm -hmm. everybody, no matter what race, creed, sex, it applies to all, say all, all, all mankind. We'll prove that as we go on. The next five, Abrahamic, Mosaic, we got another the land, David, Renew covenant, applies to Israel only. And we don't prove that. Now, can other nations be adopted in? And come? Absolutely. Absolutely. But once they come in, they must accept not only our God, but the laws that come with it. So, go back one second, babe. I know you're doing a good job, though. You know, you're, doing good, <laughs> you're doing good, babe. So, the Adam and Noah covenant applies to all mankind, and the rest of the five applies to Israel only. Right? Go ahead, baby. First covenant. The Adam covenant. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 and 23. You can write it down. I'm going to read these scriptures and we're going to go into it. Starting at verse 15. And I will put into me between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and they and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. 
All right? Pay attention to what this says. Verse 17. And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened. Now, for those that don't know, this is when Adam and Eve, they fell, right? Things got out of order. Most high is now putting it back in order, okay? And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and as eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, curses the ground for thy sake. And in sorrow thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall bring it forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, and from the dust thou art unto the dust thou shalt return. So this is the Most High giving Adam his, his judgment or his covenant he's making with. He's making a covenant with woman and he's making a covenant with man. Woman, you going, every time you have a baby, it's going it's to hurt. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> all right? And I'm not even saying like, like I do, right? That's why you have beautiful creatures, right? So, woman, you're going to have childbearing. Man, you have to work from the sweat of your brow. Nothing is going to come easy. Because see, when Adam was in the garden, the Most High was just providing everything. He was naming the animals and doing all that, but he had to work from the sweat of his brow. Right. But because of the fall, now this is a covenant that the Most High set in place for all, say all, oh. all mankind, all women. And Adam called his wife named Eve because she was the mother of the living. And to Adam also, and to his wife, the Lord God made coats of skin. Remember that. Adam called him his wife, and because she was the mother of all living, unto Adam also, and to his wife, the Lord God made coats of skin and clothed them. That's important. I'm going to show why. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, and no good and evil, and now let's put forth his hand, and let's he take also the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden to till the ground from which he was taken. Now, just to add on to this, you know, a lot of us, we make the statement, man, why Adam and Eve, man? Why they do that, man? We had the good, everything was messed, everything was good. They gonna go and mess up. Now, you know, good and well, if you was in the garden, you would've ate from the tree, too. Because how many trees do you eat from every day that the most I tell you not to touch? <clears throat> Don't touch this tree. He said, today I set before you life, death, blessing, curse, you choose. Right. That same choice was given to Adam and Eve in the garden. Because they had, listen, there was two trees they could, any tree they could have ate from except the tree of good and evil. They could have ate from the tree of life. Right, that's right. They chose knowledge over life. Right. And we're suffering that in the Hebrew community. A lot of people are trading in their faith for knowledge. That's right. 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 So now, when they go through things, they try to utilize and use their knowledge to get out when they need faith to get out. But then they just stay in a recurring cycle. Why? Because they're trying to use their knowledge. But the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, right. but in all your ways acknowledge Yah, and he will direct your path. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, let's break down the Adam, Adam covenant. Woman will have birth pains. Man, you'll have to labor. You have to work from the ground. This is the covenant he's making. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, remember I told you, every covenant has a sign and a symbol attached to it, right? The sign and the symbol, the dust of the ground, man gonna come from, and the dust he gonna return. Immortality instead of mortality. Mm -hmm. Do we still go through this today? Mm -hmm. So, is this covenant still in effect today? Yeah. It has to be. So, if we're gonna say it's done away with, it makes no sense. Because all my children, according to my wife, she had pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right? right? I still got to work. I just got off work this morning. Come on, man. We still have to, nothing is going to be given to me. It's not going to be, I have to go out and work for it. So this covenant is still in effect. Go ahead. It was a cutting to this covenant. What was the cutting? Mm -hmm. The animal. The animal. Yeah. That the most I cut to clothe Adam and Eve. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. That's right. Who was the covenant with? All oh, mankind. Every man has to work to make a living. And every woman's going to have birth pains when they have it. Yeah, you would get the, the epidural is what it's called, right? You get that. My wife ain't even like that. She was in there fighting them. I had to 
Come on, babe. She, she about to fight me. You know? <laughs> Spoiled. <laughs> no. So, proof that it's still in effect to this day. As I said, women still have birth pains, men still work to provide and make a living. Any questions on the Adam Covenant? So, the cutting was the first sacrifice? Yes. Yes. Cutting also was the first sacrifice. Absolutely. That's why he said, without the shedding of blood, no remission of sin. Right? And it was also a foreshadow of what Christ was going to do for us. Mm -hmm. Right? He covers us. We don't get to that. We knew covenant. Right? Next one, the Noah covenant. Genesis chapter 6 and 8 and chapter 9, 9 through 17. But with thee, this is the most I talk in the Noah. This is the next covenant after the Adam covenant. But with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou, shalt, and, the, and thou shalt come into the ark, and thy sons and thy wives and thy sons' wives with thee. And behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature. That includes humans. You know why? Because listen, watch what it says. That is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, of every beast of the earth, and with every beast of the earth with you, from all that God out of the ark to every beast of the earth and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by waters of blood mm -hmm. neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Now, he never said it's not going to be a flood in one section of the earth. Right. He said the whole earth. Right. And, and Yah said this is the token of the covenant. Here's the sign which we're going to get to which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual, say perpetual. perpetual. What does perpetual mean? Yes. Forever. All of them. Right. right? You know, see, when before, you know, when we was, you know, like in Christianity, we just read perpetual, that was mean perpetual. I mean, you know, that means forever. Right. Right? Perpetual generations, I do set my bow in the cloud. And it shall be a token of covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring the cloud over the earth, and a bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh and waters shall no more become a flood. I'm going to jump down to verse 16. And a bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant. Mm -hmm. Say everlasting. Everlasting. Everlasting means forever. Right. There's no end. That destroys covenant theology right there. Mm -hmm. Everlasting covenant between Yah and every living creature of all flesh that is upon earth. Right. Go ahead, man. So, let's break down the Noah covenant. All flesh shall never be cut off by water and flood to destroy the earth. All flesh. There is coming a time where the Most High is going to destroy cats with fire, but not with water. Right. Right? right. Next one, the sign of symbol. The rainbow. Say the rainbow. The rainbow. rainbow. Children, look at me. The rainbow don't mean what you think it means today. It don't mean man and man together and woman and woman together. That's right. Look at the pride of people. Yeah. That the most I flooded this world, used a symbol to make a promise that I'm never gonna flood again. And they take that same symbol to throw it in the most high face and use right. it for sexual perversion. Right. Right. Yep. Destroy Solomon the more for it. Mm -hmm. You look through the scripture, whenever that sin took over a nation, he ain't seen no prophet. Mm -hmm. Nah, I gotta nah, we gotta wipe them out. Why? Because they not carrying my image. That's they right. can't walk in my image. That's right? right? They walk in the anti-Mashiach or anti-Christ image. Right? Yeah. right? Because see, when a man and a woman comes together, they bring forth for creation, which brings glory to the Creator. Right. But when two men and two women come together, they can't bring forth nothing, so they bring glory to themselves. Right. It's self-worship. That's right. So right about saying the last days, men will become lovers of themselves. And whenever you begin to love yourself, you, that always outwardly manifests, and you begin to love what you are. Right. That's why pornography is so dangerous. Because, man, you ain't just watching women. Oh, that's right. The spirit of lust is the spirit of lust. Mm -hmm. It has no bounds. No bound, lust is lust, right? Women, you're not just watching men. Lust is lust. All right, you know, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> so, 
The cunning. It's a cunning in every, every covenant. When the flood was over, Noah sacrificed every clean animal in it. Every, every animal. Clean. Say clean. Clean. Don't want no pork, right? No pork on the sport, right? He sacrificed every clean animal. The parties that was involved, Yah or God and all mankind. This covenant applies to all mankind. It is unconditional, which means there's nothing we have to do in order for the Most High to put the bow in it. He just puts that there for a reminder that he had never flooded the whole earth. But it's important. Teach your kids what the rainbow is about. That rainbow means something when it's in the sky. That, it ain't just up there, oh, that's just pretty. And the next time they see it, it's a sticker on their in their school that's telling them it's a safe place. No, that place ain't safe. Don't, don't think that. It's an everlasting covenant that's still in effect today. Why? Because the rainbow still exists. That's right. That destroys covenant theology. Important note. The Noah covenant did not replace the Adam covenant. It was added to. These covenants are not going to cancel out each other. It's going to add to. The next covenant we have, the Abrahamic covenant. Oh, this is the big covenant, right? This is when everything, this is when it got real, right? Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 3. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, and to Abram, get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee of a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great. Say your name great. Name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse thee that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. Right? Genesis 15, 1 through 5. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in the vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless and the steward of my house? Is, is this Elijah of the Damascus? And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Thou shalt not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look toward the heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Yeah. I'm not going to read on it. I'm going to try to skip around. Genesis 17, verses 2 through 13. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. It will multiply thee. It's a lot in here. Exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face. And Yah talked to him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name be okay, to Right? That's still in effect to the day. We just got to wake the kings and queens up. Go ahead, man. Sign and symbol. Stars in the sky. He told Abram, look up in the stars. You can count it, and you'll be able to count your descendants. Right? Throughout the other scripture, he said, to heaven and earth pass away, my covenant is going to remain forever. Mm -hmm. Israel yeah. will not um, leave for me as a nation as long as the heavens and earth are um, good. What was the covenant? Remember, it's a covenant in every covenant. Mm -hmm. Circumcision. Circumcision is always some form of covenant. And the most I said, this is going to be a sign. Circumcision. Right? What are, who are the parties involved? Abraham. Mm -hmm. And three generations. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. And Israel. Mm -hmm. All right? We got scripture reference. Go ahead, man. So, Genesis 17, 21. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. So, you see the most I introducing it to Abraham. He's established with Isaac. He's going to go forward with Jacob. Go ahead, baby. Psalms 105, 8 and 10. He has remembered his covenant forever. Say forever. 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 Not when Christ came and, you know, the church world came and they replaced Israel. No. He said forever. 
the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, mm -hmm. which covenant he made with Abraham and his hope unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for the law and to Israel for a year covenant. Everlasting, Everlasting covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. This covenant did not replace the Adam and Noah covenant. It was added to it. The Mosaic covenant. Exodus 19, 5 and 6. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. Above all people, too, he said. I mean, just read over that. Yeah. For the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. That's right. One of the reasons why we're in the state that we're in is because we are not walking in the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. You can look at other nations. You say, well, other nations not doing it. He gave this covenant to Israel. That's right. That's why we suffer the hardest. That's right. We we get stiff neck and hard head. Come on. Moses going up to the talk to the most high with the tablets and rules. These dudes are building idols. Black folk, man. Come on. Man. I don't like your stuff and come on. Come on. Exodus 24, 7 and 8. And he took the book of the covenant and read it to all these by the people. And they said, All that the Lord said we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. Go ahead, baby. Exodus 34 and 10, and he said, Behold, I will make a covenant before all the people. I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with And the Lord said unto Moses, Exodus 34, write unto these words, for after the tenure of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights, and neither, neither did he eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tablets the word of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now this is where Moses went on Mount Sinai, and he got the Ten Commandments for the Most High. Go ahead, baby. Last Verse Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 5, and it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken Israel diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high mm -hmm. above oh, all nations. All nations. All nations. Right? Now, it's funny. That's right. People use this verse to try to get the blessing, but they don't want to follow the Lord. That's statue. Mm -hmm. You okay. can't get the blessing without the Lord. Impossible. Right. But it shall come to pass, verse 15, that if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Let's break down the Mosaic covenant. Israel agreed to keep God's covenant and the commandments at Mount Sinai. Moses read it to him. They said, yo, everything you said, we'll do. Right? right. What's the sign and the symbol? The Ten right. Commandments. And the Sabbath. Say Sabbath. Sabbath. That's why we keep it every Sabbath. It's a sign, right? Right. Parties involved. Yah and Israel, including future generations. All of Israel. Okay? Where was the cunning? Remember, after Moses well, Moses broke the first two tablets because of Israel. So remember, Moses had two tablets. Came down. Up to 40 days fasting, praying, came down. These dudes worshiping an idol. Only going 40 days. Now, mind you, think about it. Most idols took these dudes through the wilderness, fed a man from heaven, showed, split the Red Sea, delivered them out of it. In 40 days, they done changed them out. That's us, though. That's us. No. Right. Switch on you in a minute. What? Switch up. <laughs> I, I, know, I know, I know you've been looking out for me for 50 years, but yesterday you did me wrong. <laughs> 50 years? One day? One day. One day. One day. That's cold. You guys just told me. One day, man. <laughs> Come on, man. No. We better than that. So, Moses, Moses get tight, man. 
Moses throw the tablets down, break the tablets. <laughs> I know Moses even mad with me, but I just spent 40 days not here. And y'all do they y'all gonna make me break the tap. Y'all, you know what? Y'all. You know, I know the Bible keep it real political, but most is like, man, y'all, y'all something else. Right. All this the most I done did, and y'all, this is what y'all gonna do. Mm -hmm. So Moses breaks the tablets, and he goes back up to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Here's where the cunning is. The most I did writes the words with his finger and cuts out the stone to That's make right. the Ten Commandments. To show this is the covenant that I'm making with Israel. Just because Israel disobeys does not mean that the covenant is dead and done away with. No. That's it. Israel was messed up, not the covenant. But what covenant theology makes, makes it seem like is that there's something wrong with the, the covenant. Mm -hmm. Or, or the, the old covenant, that, that stuff that's, they, you know, that stuff is done away with because, you know, it, it couldn't do. No, nothing was wrong with it. It was the people. That's right. This covenant does not replace the Adam, Noah, Abraham covenant. It was added to it. Any questions so far? All right, let's keep going. We gather another land covenant. Very important covenant. Now, this covenant is also attached to the Abrahamic covenant. Because you remember, most I called Abraham out of his land, said, I'm going to take you into a land, and I promise you, I'm going to give it to you and your ancestors forever. But he also, the most I promised that he's going to regather Israel That's right. from the four corners and bring them back into the land. That's right. right? That's Deuteronomy right. 30, verses 1 through, and it shall come to pass when all these, all these things are come upon thee, the blessed and the cursed. Which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God has driven thee. So he says, it's going to come a time when Israel, when y'all scattered, it's going to come back to Oh, we got to start keeping these laws stacked right. up. Right. Right. Man, we got we to start doing That's something. Right. Something ain't right. This, this thing ain't working. It seems like this is a recurrence. What right. are we missing? What's, something's missing. It's missing and grieving. Law, statutes, right. and commandments. Mm -hmm. Right. Law, statutes, and commandments. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. He said, when, you, when the blessed grace comes, when I set before you, and he said, when I set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God is driven. Mm. That's right. Man, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thy heart, with mm. all thy soul, that then... Then, Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. Then, I should have put that in cap. Caps. Then, <laughs> With the exclamation point. Huh? Then, <laughs> the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee mm. and return and gather thee from all nations where the Lord thy God has scattered thee. Mm. It's only one group of people that's been scattered to all nations, y'all. Right. 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 That's right. It's only one group of people that's a byword to all nations, y'all. It's one group of people that's waking up and things are starting to change. The first is becoming last, the last is becoming first. Right. Hallelujah. If any of thy be driven out unto the uttermost parts of heaven, from this will the Lord thy God gather thee, hmm. and from this will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land. Say the land. The, the land. land. The land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. That's right. Now the circumcision is changing. It used to be the foreskin, now it's the heart. And the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now we're going to start living once we start doing it. We're dying it. now because we don't know who we are. Right. Right. And when you don't know who you are, you don't think the law, statutes, and commandments are important. Right. Go ahead, babe. Yeah. So here's the sign and the symbol. What's the sign? The land. Man. Now this little piece of land called Israel is not the entire land of Israel. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do some research, 
That ain't even a real. When they got uh, uh, the city of David and Mount Zion, it's all afflicted in right. there. Right. Right. All that is is a Disney world right. of Israel. Right. That's right. Right. That doesn't even fit the biblical map of what right. the Bible says how Israel looks like. Right. So here we are. We have the land, right? Which is now desolate. Right? Mm -hmm. Which is trotted down, as Christ said, it's going to be trotted down by Gentiles. By Gentiles. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. it's, man, to the time of the Gentiles. Gentiles. That's it. Yes, mm -hmm. To the time of the Gentiles. He said, Until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled, whoever over there they consider Gentiles. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Facts. Why? Because he said, right before that verse, he said, I'm going to scatter you to the four corners. And then this land shall be trotted down by Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Right. Because after that, I'm bringing Israel back into the land. Mm -hmm. In that desolate place. One scripture say our people are gonna look at it and look at it like, like the garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Cause it's gonna bloom, it's gonna rejoice. Why? Because the earth is waiting for Israel to return. See, we're coming back, right? Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Once Israel comes back, the earth is gonna rejoice. Yeah. Woo. Man. Why all these earthquakes are turning in? Because the earth is in mourning right now. Because mm. Israel is not in its rightful place. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Parties involved, Yah and Israel. What was the cutting? Genesis 15, 4 through 18. Here's the cutting. And behold, the word of the Lord came and I'm saying, Thou shalt, um, thou shalt be thine heir, but he shall come forth by thine own bowels and skip down. Verse 7. And he said unto him, I am the Lord thy God that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord thy God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an effort of three years old, and a she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon, and he took unto him all these and divided them, or cut them, divided them in the midst, and laid each piece mm -hmm. one against another, but the birds divided he not. And the same day the Lord thy God made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed I have given this land from the river of Egypt mm. unto the river Euphrates. Now the land of Israel even stretch like that right now. Mm. Land of Israel we know right now ain't no bigger than Jersey. Right. <laughs> right. I ask God's people when that's uh. the number one city of homosexuality. Mm. Right. Talk about it. Right. Yeah, talk about they it. had the right. biggest gay parades right. in the world. Right. Right. And tell it me. But that's God's people. Come on. Right. Are we that? Come on. We send them money, send money to help. They raised seven hundred million for this cathedral. This right. uh, over there, right. but Flint Board is still dirty. Uh, come on, come on. Talk about it. Come on now. I just want to throw this thing in too. This prop, this covenant was not fulfilled in nineteen forty eight. Right. 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 In nineteen forty eight, the biggest identity theft happened where these dudes claimed to be a people because right. these right. guys were the main progenitors of the slave trade. Right. Right. But they said in order to get rid of Israel, in order for us to become Israel, we gotta get rid of Israel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 forward that. This covenant we got in the land does not replace any other covenant. Still in effect today, because the most high has not gathered his people from the four corners, and we have not gone back mm -hmm. into the land yet. Um, mm -hmm. Those people in 1948, you go up to them and ask them. You ask them what tribe they from, they, they all say they're from Judah or Benjamin. Mm -hmm. So where the other tribes at? Right. If the Most High gathered y'all, he said he's going to gather Israel and Judah. That's right. Where's right. Israel? Right. They, they don't know. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> David covenant. Second Samuel chapter 7, 12 through 16. And when I gave thee the children, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of the bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. And he shall build an house. For my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom until Christianity come. Forever. 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 Until uh, next year. Forever. 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 It's no, it, it say forever. That's what it's saying. It's funny. We, we, we can read any book. We can read a magazine. We take a word from work. The government the Bible, we just stand in with them. And not hey, buddy. That's your interpretation. Newspaper read, man shot down in the street. Everybody got the same interpretation. Yeah. Bible forever. 
Well, or me. <laughs> and I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chase him with the rod of men and with stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee, and thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever. Before thee and thy throne mm -hmm. shall be established forever. forever. May he say forever, forever in. Second Chronicles 13 and 5. Or ye not to know that the Lord thy God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever, forever. even in him and to his sons, by a covenant of Saul. That's very important. If you notice every sacrifice given by Israel had Saul. Mm -hmm. Saul is mm -hmm. yeah. a preservative, right? Mm -hmm. Mashiach Christ even called Israel the salt of the earth. Right. Except the salt loses flavor. What good is it? But then we check one on and put them in. Right? right? Okay. Salt is very important. Right? It also is everlasting. That's the only ingredient that's made it's just the get go. Mm -hmm. Right? Because mm -hmm. the most I like flavor. Right. Come on, right. I don't like that bread right. stuff. Right. You want to sacrifice that? Give me some salt. Right. Right. Oh, I want to taste it. Right? <laughs> Folks over in Israel, don't put salt in it. That's it. Psalm 132, verses 10 through 12. But thy servant David say, turn not away thy face of thy anointed. Mm -hmm. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David, mm -hmm. he will not turn from it of the fruit of thy body, but I set upon thy throne. If thy children will keep my commandment and establish my testimony, I shall teach them their children also shall sit upon my throne mm -hmm. forevermore. So it ain't just David. We talking about his seed after. See, that's it. So, let's break this down. Y'all did to David what David wanted to do for y'all. Build a house. All right. David wanted to build it. I said, now nah, I got you. I'll build one. It's going to lead to the Shia for Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right? What's the sign and symbol? The throne. The throne. It's going to be forever. And the is going to come and be the final seed that's going to sit on the throne. Mm -hmm. And we're going to reign with What's the cutting? Sacrifices on the altar made by David that became the altar of the temple in Jerusalem. Scripture reference 1 Chronicles 21, 26, and chapter 22, verse 1. And I'm going to sing out this. I hope I ain't going too fast. What type, what's the time frame of this covenant? Everlasting mm. covenant. Here's another reference. Just to let you know it's everlasting. Isaiah 55 and 3, incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. Just like I did David. Mm -hmm. Everlasting. This covenant did not replace the Adam covenant, the Noah covenant, the Abraham covenant, the land or the Moses covenant. It was added unto it. Mm. And it's still not done away. Oh, we about to, we about to get into this. Good point. This is it right here. Now, most people call this the new covenant. <laughs> right? When it's actually it's called the renewed covenant, we'll get into it. Let's read. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1 to 6. And it shall come to pass when all these things I come upon thee, the blessed and the curse which I set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind. We already read this. Um, whether, whether the Lord thy God of Germany and shall return to the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children on thy heart, thy soul, then that then the Lord thy God will turn to captivity. We read this. Let me go down to 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. That's part of the new covenant. All right, go ahead, babe. Jeremiah 31, verse 31, and I put Hebrews 8. Because you know you got a lot of folks that run running Hebrews 8, right? Yeah. So look at the revelation of Paul. He had, that was a revelation, man. Paul just copied Jeremiah 31, 31. Wow. That's all he did. That was not a revelation. <laughs> Paul copied it and he gave you the synopsis on it. He did that with mostly all his letters. Because the only reference they had was what? The Torah. The Old Testament. Old Testament. That was the only reference they had. The Torah, the Tanakh. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 35. The old days come, says the Lord, that I will make 
8, and I put that here, we're going to move to the next slide. Renew covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Israel and Judah. Why do you say Israel and Judah? Because at this time, they were going to be separate houses. Right? But the end goal is to bring them back is one spirit. Right. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, we see that happening today. Today. It's happening. Yeah. Don't let me hear fool you. Oh, you know, black on black problems. Israel and Judah is coming together. Right. Time is wrapping up. Go back, man. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them out of here. They bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Mm -hmm. Not my covenant that fell. They break. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. He's talking about the whole house of Israel. Mm -hmm. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law, law. denomination law. in their law. 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 I will put my, I will raise up a man and put his rules and what he said in their heart. No. No. Law, say law. 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 So how can the law be done away with when it's part of the new covenant? Huh? Can be. That's right. It can be. Because the most I gotta write it on your heart. You got to. <laughs> that, that. And write in their hearts, it will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, his key. And every man his brother say, Know the Lord, for thou shalt know me from the least of them to the greatest. Say the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity. Mm -hmm. right. What's iniquity? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. I'm going to forgive that. Because it's a time where they forgot and it was a pop. I'm going to forgive that. Because mm -hmm. they're going to come back into the law because I'm going to write it on their heart. Mm -hmm. right. And I will remember their sin no oh, more. Right. Let's dig into it. Now, when people, this is for the Blue Letter Bible. If you don't have this Bible app, download it. Get it. Best Bible app. Yes. Right. I mean, this is a walking, yes. I mean, this is like 25, you know, you got the Greek lexicon, Hebrew lexicon, and it's so easy. I'm going to show you kind of how to use it, okay? So, we're going to take that word new. Now, what some people do, here's the mistake some people do. They read Hebrews 8 and 8, you know, the ones that say the covenant, the whole covenant, that, that covenant theology. They read Hebrews 8 and 8, and they take that word new out of Hebrews 8 and 8, and they're going to look up the Greek definition of it. Right. But you can't look up the Greek definition. I know the New Testament is written in Greek, but you can't look up the Greek definition. you got to go to the source, which was in Jeremiah, which was written in Hebrew. That's right. You have to look up the Hebrew definition. Right. Right. Okay, let's do it. So, according to Jeremiah 31, 31, the word new, Strong's number H2319, means Kadesh. Say Kadesh. Kadesh. Notice that. Kadesh. Now, when you see, when you pull up Blue Letter Bible and you see this, you see something like this, you have to hit what that root word is. Come on. Because that's where that word is pulled from. That's right. You just can't go and get the definition of this and say, oh, this is what it means. You got to go to the root word, the etymology of the word. It's very simple. Don't let that word etymology skip you. All right? <laughs> so, once you hit etymology, H2318 comes up. It means what? Kadesh. Right? There's no root word to go to because it's the prim primary root. Right? So, once we look up Kadesh, H2318, I hope I ain't going too fast, the definition means to be new, huh. renew, repair. Yeah. Mm. To uh, renew, right. to make her new, right. to repair. Yeah. Talk about it. Uh, that's what it say. Ooh, Talk about say, it. Go back, babe. Let them see that. Let them see that. To renew. This is what I didn't I didn't create this. This is the you can copy if you want. Copy the whole thing and go to it. Right? To be new, renew, repair. To renew. To make a new. To repair. So you just can't go from the Greek word from Hebrews 8 and 8 because Paul didn't make that up. He got that from Jeremiah 31. Go to the main source, which is written in Hebrew. Find the word. Look up the root word. Renew or, renew or repair. So we, we're looking at not a new covenant, but a repaired covenant. That's why it's called the Vareh Halajah, the renewed covenant. But see, they had to change the concept of renew to New Testament. 
So that's where that page was created between Malachi and Matthew. Welcome to the New Testament. Who wrote that page? <laughs> <laughs> who wrote it? Because I, I, I always ask that, like, man, I wonder who wrote this page. I'm a little kid. Like, man, everybody got, but well, what is this page right here? Right. Who wrote this one page and made it all nice, the New Testament? Church fathers. Came around, I think it was Bishop Jerome or King Jerome. But that's all another story. So, for new covenant, let's get into it. <clears throat> Give it to Israel and Judah. He will re reunite the two houses of Israel and write his law on their heart. Hallelujah. 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 What's the symbol of sign? Circumcision of the heart. You know, you're going to be changed. Not from the outward, but even from the inside. See, when you walk in, when you walk in, in the Ruach or the Spirit, it's easy to love one another. That's right. It ain't so easy to throw your brothers and sisters away just because they do one, one little thing. Right. Come on, Israel. We got to do better than that. They got to be like an Acts chapter 2 every time we come together. That's right. That's when right. we shake in the world, we turn the cities right side up. Don't worry. This is Sydney. We're going to turn Houston Hallelujah. right side up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just watch, just watch, watch with the most high about the Where's the cutting? Yahshua, Christ crucified. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. Yahshua, Christ crucified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. The parties involved was Israel and all those grafted in. Now all those that get grafted in, they become Israel. That's right. Right? Spiritual. Now as a natural Israel, it's a spiritual Israel. But they get grafted in, yes. Right? But the, 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 the covenant was towards Israel. He said, I make this covenant not with the, not with the church. I always thought that. But it said with Israel and with Judah. That's what the script said. We just read that. Go ahead, babe. It is an everlasting covenant. We don't got to prove this because they believe this is everlasting anyway. But it's the kicker. It has not been fulfilled yet. Hmm. A lot of people think we're, in, we're not in the renewed covenant right now. Huh. What Christ was showing us was proposal. <coughs> we are not married to him yet. Mm. He was proposing to us. Mm. Right? Now, see, we have to get out of the mindset of thinking from a westernized perspective. Oh, yeah. Of Eastern. No, Western. 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 My son's trying to correct me. Yeah. <laughs> so, from a westernized perspective. Mm. Why? Because when we think proposal, if I say, yo, Christ proposed to you, you know, I'm like, man, when did Christ get on the knee and give it, give it? And you're like, no, I'm not talking about, like, you're not going to understand it. Because mm -hmm. Eastern proposal went totally different, mm -hmm. right? One of the things they did with proposal is that the bride had to wait inside the chamber, and the groom would go knock on the door. Right. And if she opened up the door, he would come in and dine with her. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Christ said, I stand at the door and I knock. And if you open up, I'll come That's in and dine said. with you, right? right? Another part of the ceremony is he'll pour a cup of wine, drink from it, then the second cup, the groom won't drink from it. He'll tell the bride, I will not drink from it until we sit down at the marriage table. Mm. What did Christ tell the disciples? I will not drink from this cup until we sit at the table with my father. He was showing them proposal. So how else? We, but, but we are in the new covenant. This is what this is what Christ said. What did Jeremiah 31 say? He said, I will write my laws on that heart. And then I it's gonna come a time where you're not gonna to have to teach, teach your brother or sister. You know, who the most high because they don't know from the least to the, to the grave. Right. Are we still teaching people? Yeah. So that means it's not in me yet. What else did he say? He said, I will remember your sins yeah, no more. No more. That's, right. That's another lie we've been told. That the most high forgets our sin. If he does, why are we still suffering from the Adam covenant? Yeah. Uh, all right. Why we still have birth right. pains? That's right. He can forgive us, but he ain't forget. Right. Cause you still, I still got to work from the sweat of my brow. Yes, sir. But he said he's not gonna remember our iniquities no more. It's gonna come a time where that is gonna happen. That just has not happened right now. Because if it did, I should, my wife should be suffering childbirth. I shouldn't have to work from the sweat of my brow. Right? Because he said he'll remember the sin no more. But we're still suffering from what Adam and Eve did mm -hmm. all the way back in the garden. That's right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Christ's blood is to cover us 
like the lambs did during the Passover until we come into covenant. That's why Christ said, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. So what do I mean? Now, we are not into this covenant yet, but we have Mashiach's or Christ's blood covering us until we enter into this covenant. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing that happened with Israel. When they came out of Egypt, they had to slay the lamb, right? Mm -hmm. Put the lamb on their doorposts. That blood covered them until they reached Mount Sinai. Once they reached Mount Sinai, they then came in agreement with the covenant and then fulfilled with the covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was not in the covenant until they reached Mount Sinai. Most High cut out the Ten Commandments and gave it to them. But until then, the lamb blood covered them until they reached that point of marriage. Same thing is happening now. The lamb, the precious lamb, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, right? As some call. He's, his blood is covering us until we enter into that That's part right. of the covenant. Right. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. That blood was important in Exodus. That blood didn't just wasn't just on the door just to be something nice and pretty. Yeah. That's not, right. not even just as a representation to save the firstborn. Because understand, some of Israel's firstborn died. Right. And then they put the blood. Put the blood right. Some of the Egyptians' firstborns were saved. Because they put the book. Going through right. all them nine plagues, man, listen, man. <laughs> I ain't with it, man. I'm doing the plug. Get me there. I'm doing whatever y'all do. <laughs> I'm doing everything y'all do. You what? <laughs> what y'all doing? Are we over here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sit, sit down. Okay. <laughs> Straight up. Where we going? That's why the Bible said easy. They gave all their possession because they recognized who the most high was. Yeah. But that blood on the doorpost was a representation of a nation being born. Because any time a baby is born, he has to come through a bloody doorpost. Right. Yeah. That nation was born that day. It right. came through a doorpost. It was born a nation. Walk out as a nation that day. Yeah. 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 Right now. Christ's blood is going to cover us until we enter into that covenant. Mm -hmm. So, we, we, I think there's one more slide after this we, 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 when we're done. The status of the covenant, they are not done away with. We proved that, right? Huh? Uh, we proved that. We proved that. Some made, some were made with all men, and some only made with Israel. We showed that. They do not cancel each other out. They add to each other. Right. Each covenant is a reminder of the hope and the promise of Yah. That's why when you see that rainbow, that just ain't no. Oh, look at the rainbow. Oh, it's not. Man, that's a covenant. That's not even right. the most high still remembers. He still remembers. He's still here. Covenant summed up. Noah, by the way, Noah was able to recover from God's judgment leading to Abraham from the flood. Go ahead, baby. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob established a family. Moses transformed the family into tribes forming a nation. David established the kingship, everlasting kingship of that nation. And then Yahshua, Jesus, made redemption possible for all men to fulfill the promise to Adam and Abraham. In your seed will all families of the earth be blessed. All the covenants work together in unison, and they point to the Shiite. Why so the Shiite can bring this thing full, curve, full circle? They do not cancel each other out, but they prove and support one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are the covenants. Mm -hmm. We have to get back to these. That's right. These covenants are not done away with. Mm -hmm. They told us that, but they lied. That's right. Why did they lie? Because as long as I can keep Israel in ignorance, mm -hmm. I can keep them bound. Because right. my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. knowledge. Mm -hmm. And knowledge is not everything. Yeah. Knowledge is not everything. It's good to have knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. But knowledge is not, you got to have faith for some things. Because mm -hmm. right. it don't take faith to get out of some things. Right. <clears throat> Sometimes we, we attach faith to our emotions. We can't do that. Mm -hmm. right. right? You can't attach faith to how you feel. You, you've got. It's what you believe. <coughs> Mashiach in the garden, he did not feel good. Yeah. He was like, man, Father, if it's Possibly any other way, man, let's, let's do it that way, no. man. 
Yeah. This is crazy. Uh, <laughs> he, was, he wasn't feeling right. But then he came back to what he believed. Right. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done, Father. Then he was able to accomplish it. Mm. Faith. Faith. We need faith. That's why Mashiach said, well, I'll find faith when I come back. Right? Not knowledge. Knowledge is good. But it's a time where you have to utilize faith mm. and depend totally on the Most High. I talked to y'all last week about it. Sometimes when we look at God as one dimensional, do we just we just know him one way, right? I know God as a as a provider, but do you know him as a healer? Come on, right. come on. Do you know him as a healer? Right. If you don't know him as a healer, he's gonna take you through something so you can know him as a healer. It's not to it's not to treat you bad or get, he wants you to know the different side of him. Because you'll never appreciate a diamond looking at it one way. Yeah, Once that right. thing turns, you're looking at the cut, you're like, woo! Man, let the what you know, when I proposed to my wife, I gave her that, that diamond. Chill, put it down, it'll break your hand, baby. So, <laughs> I, I gave her that diamond, she was looking at it, and you know, women don't just look at it like this. They right. look and turn, see the light, because it's different sides to appreciate the value of it. Some of us only know more sides one way. But in these times, he's going to take us through some things so we can know him as a provider. Yes. We can know him as a keeper. Amen. We can know him as a healer. Amen. We can know him as a doctor, a lawyer, a friend. We can know him as those things. So we don't just have to have somebody else's testimony with him. We can tell our own testimony. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 So, I'll give you an example. We got any more? No. Come on. Come on. 